so I made it to persist using core data but the problem is insert works but edit does not work so some sort of design level changes we have to do because the last example this particular table was populated by a mutable array which was locally edited now the data is coming from a core data and uh, we had to add the option to edit so let me see how it has been implemented um, okay, main storyboard so when plus button or the add button is clicked this particular segue is called it is launching a view controller for adding the record and when I come back when I click save button I come back and uh, I insert the data I mean the reverse unwinding segue is there that is a manual segue and once I come back uh, so I'm going to get a call back over here let me see okay. <coughs> this is for editing now this is the place we get a call back and this is where we are editing it but as per the design the same view controller is going to be loaded for editing as well so first we'll fix the force closing issue so you see now the application is stuck because of the error so why it is happening because whenever I go to I click on the cell or table cell I am calling or uh, this particular segue is being called it is actually querying something else because the students record no more is having an object key because it doesn't have a NS dictionary instead it is uh, having uh, student entity instance so this part we have to first modify let me build okay students record object at the index index is available so I just got the student entity now instead of student object I would like to send the student entity inside so let me go to the add edit control view controller here I need to do a couple of changes this is NS dictionary instead I want uh, student entity object headers needed to make it student entity object so I made it as a student entity object now I can't std object I can point it we're not done yet yeah, a couple of errors because it is searching from our NS dictionary that is not the case instead we have student object yes name Value is being populated in this way, so at least we should see the data edit should work at this point. There are a couple of where it is. Now I see the edit. I mean, I could take the data to the second view controller at least, but not exactly it is edit. I had to add the code for edit. 
so I could click and bring the data over to the second view controller so I can still add but I could not edit because if I edit it will add as a new data because I haven't I'm not distinguishing uh, what is edit and add so here I have to do a couple of changes first thing when the plus is clicked it is for inserting a new data but when the same thing when a, a table view cell items clicked it is for edit so the second view controller or the particular view controller where the add form is there should identify whether the particular data is coming for editing or saving or inserting a new record so to make that happen maybe I'm going to need a couple of things let me try so this is where so I'm going to need one more property mm. keep in a string Just going to keep on in a string or boolean so we keep boolean will do yes or no we can easily play around with that what exactly this guy is giving error Let me make it strong. The object type retain or strong should be okay. I'll, I'll just keep it a string, not atomic. primitive type data always give us some sort of referencing issues so let me go and give it as a string and synthesize okay. now in the table view controller whenever editing is called I am going to make add edit controller is edit set to yes so some just uh, string value so whenever this is being set it will always consider for the page is going for editing purpose so here when a reverse segue is called where is the reverse part? here so we have add edit view controller if add edit view controller is edit set if edit is having non null value or yes it is for edit otherwise it is for insert so the same part so insert block I am just going to put it over here I'll keep it as a common okay 
this is for inserting for editing we have to get back the data this also will make it as a global in this case the student entity object would be std entity object would be already existing and set the new value <coughs> set yes name and edit controller name field text I think these are all the blocks we could make it okay no problem let it be this block could be made as a common we don't need to write one more time only difference the std entity object is retrieved from already existing object or an object is created for insertion so if edit is, uh, I mean the value is having edit, some non-null value or s is having mean, that object is already existing and that object value is getting changed and finally it is going to be saved. Or otherwise if it is an insert, a new insert object will be created and it will set the value and do that. So finally we will reload the table, okay already we are doing that. Okay, let me try now. <coughs> I'm just going to change this user. You see that the value is edited. Now the value is not inserting, it is just editing. So the value is edited. So let us first test the insert is also working. And insert is also working and of course we made it insert and edit option so this is for inserting a new record this is for updating an existing record so this particular core data if already existing object is available all you need to modify the values and save it or if an object is for going for insertion create a new instance of std entity or student entity then add a value and insert. So this manager object context, it identifying the record which is already existing or a record is new. It is possible only because this uh, core data or on, on non -exec, I mean no SQL database internally having some sort of unique identity or maybe some primary key or some sort of keys to identify whether the record is already existing or it is a new record. So for a view controller to identify this particular calls are happening for insertion or edit I made use of one string object or string property and I am checking because at this point I am just declaring a string property if I do not have uh, I mean assign any value naturally it is going to be a null object or nil object so this particular condition is checking the is edit is a null object or having any value that's the reason I'm not even checking whether it is equal to s or not I'll just need to see whether it is a null null value or having any other values assigned so it's if it is a non null value mean it is for already existing record or if null is called naturally it is for a new uh, value to be inserted so this particular 
design change, we made sure the insert as well as uh, edit works. So that's fine. Now we have to delete it. I have already added the delete option. So once I click, uh, of course the application is crashing. But once it is clicked, I would like to delete that. So that particular part. You notice we enabled this one set to yes because this will make sure an additional uh, button like delete or edit added to the list view and this particular part also we had to enable remember it is already checking the ui table view editing style for delete mean when a delete button is pressed or any other button like edit or something like that we only have a delete button so it is making a callback over here so you have to identify which index being called maybe we already have an index path so we will be knowing which item is getting click for delete so what I can do student entity students record object at the index from the index path pick the row now we have the object which is clicked for delete so call the we need a ns uh, error object first student Manage object context delete object. There is a delete object exist. Once you assigned it for delete, it won't immediately delete. You have to save. very important at this point assign for deletion and then finally when you save it that particular record will be removed and finally reload the student records so let's see whether the delete works or not setting this one yes it deletes so we made the delete also working at this point so edit works insert works and edit also already working we checked it insert working and finally we also made sure <laughs> delete also so this is in sync with the core data so the data the changes are permanent anytime you enclose and open your application you will always see the values persisted and modified so using core data you can persist a subscriptive value of data I mean a kind of a table data or core data a bunch of data but we still have one more uh, way to save the content preferential data so that how to save them for example you have some sort of condition set uh, your individual preference so that how it can we can save that also we will see in fact this login or maybe a registration screen I will add it that part we will save it in a preferential data instead of core data so that data storage I'll introduce maybe tomorrow or uh, Monday session. Then we'll be uh, good to know about how the persistent engines work in iOS. Okay, so I'll finish with this.